Do you ever wonder how great leaders in the community make things happen? When they encounter new unexpected challenges like a pandemic, how do they continue to successfully make an impact? Welcome to That Sounds Terrific, the podcast that connects you with these amazing people. Get insights on what they do to meet their goals. Find out how you can help them in their mission and learn their methods so you can be more successful at what you do. Welcome to That Sounds Terrific with host Nick Koziel. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of That Sounds Terrific. Joining me today is Rayanne Lacatina, and she is the CEO and business coach of Rayanne Lacatina's Holistic Business Coaching. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me today. Oh, it's my pleasure uh, to have you. I, I know we met a number of weeks ago and we started talking and I started listening about all the things that you're doing with your your coaching and in and, and your life and how you're affecting the community. And I was so excited to kind of offer you a spot on the show because I think others really need to hear uh, about your unique approach to, to business coaching. So why don't you just tell us a little bit about like how your business came to be and, you know, a little bit about yourself. Sure. Happy to do that. Thank you very much. So how I came to be, I started my career as a mental health therapist, actually. Um, so I'm still, I still carry and hold my clinical licensure in mental health counseling, but closed my counseling practice a number of years ago. I started uh, my first go round of being in the mental health world was in pediatric palliative care, where I helped a lot of different families go through some very difficult circumstances in their life where their child had either a life threatening illness, um, a diagnosis or disease. Sometimes we were able to walk those families to cure. And sometimes, unfortunately, we had to say goodbye to them. And part of my role was helping those families to to walk through the end of their life. Um, and I learned so much from those families and those experiences, uh, including a little bit more about, you know, who I am as a human being. And I am so grateful for that experience, um, having gone through pediatric palliative care with those families. And one of the things I learned is that I'm an empath, which means that I feel things and see things differently, maybe than other people, which also means that I'm very sensitive to my surroundings. And I learned that I need different ways to take care of myself and, and protect myself from very difficult circumstances. And I learned about life and the hard questions in the world and a fast track in that first part of my career. Um, and part of that was learning that I can help people see things in their business differently as well. It evolved into business coaching, um, which was a, a really great fit for me because I can help people to build uh, the surroundings that they need in their environment, which is a part of what makes my holistic business coaching practice different. Some people out there really only focus on the strategy in business. But what I believe and what I understand is that the business is a focus of the whole human being. And so it affects their family, it affects relationships, it affects their finances, obviously, but it also affects their spirituality and their bodies and their minds. And so we incorporate that 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 feminine side or that internal side, the soft side of leadership into the holistic business coaching that I do, as well as the masculine or external side of business, the strategy that we're used to seeing. And so that marrying of those two worlds helps business owners to really integrate who they are as a human being in service to the people that they take care of. And I now have all different kinds of business owners that I take care of. I take care of professionals like chiropractors and mental health practitioners and coaches. Then I also have creatives like artists and authors and actors. I have um, digital business owners. I have brick and mortar in my local community, some, some beloved uh, businesses right in our hometown area. So all different kinds of small business owners who really understand that they want to make a big impact and they want to make a change in the world for the better. And they want to take their business to the next level. Wow. <laughs> that is so much information and such great <laughs> stuff. I mean, I mean, I got, I got to unpack some of this for sure. Um, sure. One yeah, thing I, I figured do wanna, you'd want to. <laughs> yeah. Like I had no idea that's kind of where you, you came from, even though I kind of sneak a peek at your LinkedIn, but um, I do have to share something of my own personal experience that you just made me think of. Um, and I may have shared this on the show before, but m my daughter had a, um, a medical uh, condition that happened to her um, very early in her life. She was she was around one years old, and um, mm. we were, were in basically um, infant uh, intensive care. And mm -hmm. there was a person 
like you that was helping us like immediately at the hospital. Um, and I was Good. just so impressed with, with the nurses, the doctor, but particularly that service, um, you know, trying to help us. I mean, simple things like getting it. My wife didn't have any clothes, right? Like we, we rushed yeah. up in an ambulance and, and I followed. And, and so like, they got us clothes, they got us meal vouchers, they helped right. us. Um, but also the sobering effect of like knowing that, you know, we were only there for a short time and seeing on that floor, the families and, and the kids, um, I, I, we were only there for a short time and there were kids there that didn't have their parents there because they had to go back to work and yeah. they're like young walking around a hospital floor, you know? And, and so I guess the point I'm trying to make here is people like you are, are so amazing and, and so terrific that you can do that. And it had to be such an emotionally draining um, role for you to be in. I, I applaud you for that. And I thank you for, for what you've done for so many families. Oh, well, I'm <laughs> thank you. And it, it was not just me and it wasn't always emotionally draining. Some, I, I, honestly, it was one of the most fulfilling things ever to be mm -hmm. in, to bear witness to some of these incredible families that they've had to go through this. And, and again, they've taught me so much. And so it was an emotional fuel too. Mm -hmm. uh, many of the people that I worked with in that time frame are still doing that work and have been doing it for decades. And so mm -hmm. these are some very special people who can really devote their lives to the care of these families and these individuals. Um, it is not a small task for sure. So it is, yes, sometimes very difficult emotionally, but it is also incredibly uh, rewarding emotionally. It is both. And one of the things that you were kind of speaking to is that when we go through these really challenging things, we, we have to go back to the basics, like the bare necessities of what we need. And one of the things I learned is that so, you know, some people call it self-care, mm -hmm. right? But really to have those bare necessity needs and those simple pleasures like clothes to have to change into or a nice meal to fill our bellies can become so soothing and comforting and can be an incredible care to someone who's going through a hard time, but through any time, frankly. And so one of the gifts that this these the experience gave me is to really be belligerent about helping people understand that what they need to be to feel safe, what they need to feel comfortable, what they need to feel cared for, how they feel appreciated, how to ask for help. I, I learned these lessons from these families. And so I really insist for my business owners now, who's your care team? Who are your people? Who's your support system? Who is going to help you to go through the ups and downs those emotional rewards and those emotional drains happen in business too. Yeah. And so having the, the bolstering support system, the community and the understanding of what you need physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, financially to feel safe, calm, and, and then some, um, is a part of the work that we do because we're all human beings having a human experience. And I, you know, I'm really grateful to have that embedded in my body so that I can help other people, uh, do the same thing. Yeah, thank you. I mean, you really clarified my thought even more. <laughs> you're in my head because I was thinking the same thing. And and I sort of misspoke with like just the emotional and draining part. Yeah, there's definitely some things that you learned and I would learn from that. I just know, I know my heart, you know, and, and that that kind of work would, you know, be really hard for me. And I'm sure at times, like you said, it's really hard for you, but also the, yeah. the successes and 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 seeing patients get well and 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 those moments um I'm sure were quite um you know invigorating and 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 helpful right um yeah but I sure. just I just I definitely wanted to touch on that because I know well, that's not exactly what we were going to talk about in this podcast but um you know pe people like yourself and, and the ones that you work with helping and supporting these families experiencing that support firsthand um <clears throat> you know, guide me in a totally different career path where I wanted to help more people. And, and it's in some ways led to this show, um, right. you know, so, um, and I just wanted to take a, a second to like, you know, really concentrate on that and thank you for, for that experience that you, you know, gave so many, um, so many families and, and comfort that you do. And, and now, um, you know, well, thank you for sharing your story. Also, yeah. I appreciate that very much. I appreciate yeah. being vulnerable and sharing that. And we have similar paths, right? Like, so 
you know, something like that teaches you and takes you into your next phase of life too, which is a beautiful thing as well. So thank you for sharing that yeah. with me too. Well, my pleasure. And thank you for hearing me out. And, um, you know, it, it's interesting in, in our networking connections and our businesses and things like that, the people that you're, you're talking to when you find those, those um, little pieces of the web that connect you, yeah. um, you can relate to, to so many things that, you know, people are going through or, or whatever. So in, in that respect, like taking, you know, the experiences that you have and, and, you know, the connections that you've made over, over time, like, how does that work into, um, you know, your business model and, and, and holistic, you know, assistance for, for your clients? Yeah. Yeah. Well, like I was mentioning, there's, there are different parts of, of the philosophy that I teach my different business owners. And one of the things that we really get to the bottom of is that it all starts basically in our minds. <laughs> and so many people neglect that side of business. We immediately want to spring into action. We want results in our business. And if we only focus on the results and the action, we will get ourselves into situations sometimes in business. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of slow down and start to learn more about what we really want to do, who we really want to be, why we really want to do it in service to what values, what human beings, we, we really go the internal route and the external route. And so then with all that information internally, what do we have, what behaviors and actions and activities do we have that match who we really want to be in the world and what difference we want to make? Because if we don't have that anchoring and why we're doing what we're doing, we don't have as a strong a motivation source. We don't have a strong energy source. Uh, we're not able to focus on uh, creating a difference for ourselves and our families and, our, and our, our clients or customers in the same way. And different people have different whys. It doesn't matter what it is. We just want to get clear about what it is. Sometimes clients come to me and they want to make a lot of money. Okay, <laughs> there, let's, let's, let's do that. And, and you know why you want to make a lot of money? And we get clear about the fact that you know that that if there's if making a lot of money is is the fuel source if it's truly the why we just want to make sure that we're not getting ourselves into uh the situation where we think maybe if we have money we'll be happy because they're not the same thing or if we make money it'll solve all of our problems because that's not how it works so we just really drill down on that internal piece in combination with the external strategy other times we have business owners who um, have built something, they've built a, you know, a huge impact in their lives and their communities and their clients' lives, and they want to take it to the next level. So like if have we, uh, we wrote a book, maybe we want to create a, a podcast or a show or a TED Talk. And so figuring out what's the motivation behind that and what is the strategy behind that is really what we focus on. Very cool. Very cool. Clarity is so important in all that we do, but especially business. And in order to get those things, you you need to know yourself and, and your motivations yes. and getting to right. the root of that is, um, can be tough, right? Uh, cause it's, yeah. it's, it's so interesting how people, <laughs> you know, and I'm victim of it too, all the time, like kind of lie to themselves about certain things and, and trying to overcome those, those hurdles can be challenging. So, what are some like techniques that you use to kind of help your business owners overcome some of this and identify those internal struggles? Like, I, I tell you, I, I could be a great <laughs> case for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we're we're all human beings. We all have we all have these kinds of things going on in our brains and our thoughts and our experiences. So I have built a framework that I teach my clients. Um, it's called Steer Clear and anchor. It's something that I'm focusing on. I'm actually writing a book about it right now. It's a, it's a, Very it's cool. a different exercise in and of itself to bring that sure. to, uh, to a book and to have my own story embedded in it is, is a vulnerable, awesome, terrifying, terrific experience. <laughs> um, and in that book, I'm, I'm talking about this framework, which is really about getting clear about how to look at your thoughts differently, how to position them differently, what it looks like to actually feel um, the, the, the feelings that are supporting you in your decision making and the ones that are limiting you, the thoughts and the feelings that are limiting you in that experience, as well as dr uh, drilling down on some of the behaviors, again, that are affecting you positively or, or negatively and, and looking at those results differently. So we do some reframing exercises. We do some clearing and anchoring exercises. I didn't mention yet, but I'm also a Reiki master. So not just a, a mental health therapist, but also engage in Reiki. Not all of my clients will engage 
and energy work with me. Um, and to at least teach them about energy management is something that I definitely do and how deeply they want to go and what that means for them um, looks different for different people. I have some more analytical folks who like the quantum physics and the neuroscience of energy, which mm -hmm. we can do that. And because of my training, we can talk about the way that the brains and the neurons and the synapses work to help you fire differently in your thoughts and your feelings and your energy and your behavior. Or we can go into the spirituality of it if that's something that suits the person that I'm supporting and, and, and what we're looking at. Um, but either way, we're looking at what are the, the thoughts, the emotions, the actions, and the results that are supporting us and the ones that are limiting us. And then we're looking at shifting them into a different approach because every single situation that we're in can be approached in these two paths, right? What's limiting mm -hmm. us, what's supporting us, uh, what's useful, what's not so useful, what's, what's empowering us, what's getting in our way. And so we kind of separate out those different experiences and help people choose because that's the really empowering piece is that we can choose to keep telling ourselves the same stories over and over again. We can choose to, to energize thoughts that we're not good enough, or we don't have enough, or we're not organized enough, or we're not solid enough in our understanding or our knowledge base or our beliefs. That's not a very empowering belief to, and, and path to walk down. Then we look at what are some evidence that we can create that already exists in our life. This is something that's an important uh, principle as well, is that because I believe a human being in a business is a whole person and all of the experiences that they're having in their business are holistic, a part of who they are. We can look at, for example, if we are a parent in business, a lot of the people that I work with are also parents and business owners because I happen to be a mother of three children. And so they like to work with someone who gets the differences and nuances between being a business owner and having a family to, to raise and to run and to support and be present to, and not wanting to sacrifice either of those things is something that a lot of people will come to me for. But if we're a parent and we're really proud of how we parent, we can take some of the evidence, some of the things that we do, maybe multitasking or organizing for our family or creating fun experiences for them or, or bringing them on adventures or teaching them how to manage their emotions. These are all um, experiences that we can borrow and apply to our business. And so we can be successful in one area of our life and dra draw it over to our business as well. There is success happening depending on your own measurement of success that we can bring from those different categories or areas in our life. You are like the Swiss army knife of business coaches. I mean, <laughs> the Jill like, of all trades. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's, it's so awesome to hear like all these different things. And and I love that you um, really concentrate on trying to bring other aspects of people's lives into their business. Because, you know, if you go back to some of the other things you were saying about how like the two different types of you know, like there's the the nitty gritty business stuff, like the money, the finance and all that stuff. And then there's the intuition, like a lot of people just concentrate on on the business aspect of it and don't yeah. think there's any room for personal life in business. And they are bringing their own personal life into to business every day, whether very they much. admit it or not. <laughs> uh, and maybe the type of person that they are, that everything's very transactional, but they are bringing that in there. And um, if you draw attention to it and you understand that you're doing that, um, you'll be much more effective at it. So, right. Yeah. Very cool. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, often people will come to me, you know, maybe they've, they've been wildly successful in their business from a financial strategic side, but they've ruined relationships along the way because right. they've only focused on that transaction. And maybe they've treated their relationships at home as a transaction yep. and they're, they're creating what I call a broke millionaire situation. Mm -hmm. They got lots and lots of money, but you are broke in relationships, broken love, broken connection, broken experiences uh, because you have no one to share it with. And so, mm -hmm. so the repairing happens on the other side sometimes. So sure, we're keeping in balance our business because they've developed this belief that if they give give their business their all, they're focused on that, they're very um, hard pressed on doing their business a certain way and having most of their energy, it's going to mm -hmm. take some time to repattern into actually reallocating some of those resources to our family, to our relationships, to our, our health, our mental health, our wellness, et cetera. Sure. We all, we all have examples of these people in our lives and, in you know, in our careers. And I used to be, um, and, and still fundraise to some extent, but I used to be a fundraiser by profession. And one of the things I would run into 
very often is um, asking for money uh, at the you know detriment of the relationship, right? And not mm -hmm. waiting for that person to have that great emotional connection that will stay with us for you know and stay with the organization for years to come. To to ask to prematurely, um, you may still get the gift in a lot of situations they did, but then they've sort of burnt a road, right? They've burnt a you know uh, emptied a well. Um, yeah. Whereas maybe if they started smaller or really guided through, they they have a relationship for life. And um, once you do that, like kind of what you're you're talking about with you know um, being you're rich, right? You've got the money; it's in there. But you don't have that volunteer or that person that's willing to go to bat for you um, necessarily right. for life, right? So, um. I know that there really isn't based upon what you've <laughs> been describing, but do you have like an ideal client or someone that, that really, um, or a business that you kind of gravitate towards or um, specialize in? Well, the, the particular kind of business. So in my practice, the ideal is the variety is the spice of life. I'm not specifically focused on one area of business. Mm -hmm because I love having different experts in different fields. One of my favorite things is to watch someone love what they do and do it well. Mm -hmm. I don't care what it is. I just love when people are doing amazing things and, and doing it well. And so I, I don't need to be the expert in their craft. Mm -hmm. And I love having all the different people to learn from. I have, like I said, I have actors and chiropractors and food truck owners. So they, they get to be the expert in their field. What often happens though, is that they come to their business as a means to an end. And they're not also owning the identity of business owner. And mm -hmm. so I help people who have expert craft in their profession, whatever it is, adopt the identity of CEO and business owner too. Mm -hmm. Like my, my creatives, no, 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 I'm not a business owner. <laughs> I don't use that side of my brain. That's not something that I do. I don't do numbers. I don't, you know, I'm a creative. I need blue sky time. And we heal this part of us by showing them actually you are business one is very creative. It's a very creative process. So if you can just apply that creativity to your business ownership, things will go a lot better. First of all, yeah. second of all, you know, that you have been doing business. We just need to learn to, to, uh, to own that we're doing it and maybe reposition a couple things <laughs> so that we can enjoy business a little bit differently. So I heal and help people understand that they're business owners really is what it comes down to with some of my clients. My ideal clients are open-minded to all the different ways of doing this. I, again, I love also helping people craft their care plan for their business. And I love when people, even if they've never been exposed to things like Reiki or the emotional freedom technique or some of these tools that I will teach them. I don't ask that they like them or that they definitely use them. I just ask them to be open to it. And if it doesn't work, because not everything works for everybody and not everything is a good fit in different seasons of time. And if we can just play a little bit and find out what is it, what is the the set of tools and the set of support systems that are going to help you be as happy and healthy and wealthy as possible. So I do like to work with people who are open-minded. Mm -hmm. um, and I like to, I, I prefer to work with people who really do uh, want to make a difference in the world, who have mission, if not love driven leadership, where they're really focused on creating a difference in the planet and the community in the in the world because it's just a different vibe when we're when we're making a difference for other people that's kind of my my preferred way of working very cool very cool um you know it, it's just again like i can relate to a lot of what you're saying just based on some of the consulting stuff that i've done i've always enjoyed doing things that i've you know businesses working with businesses that i have no contact with right and, and even in what i'm doing right now it's just so wonderful and i get so much energy out of learning yeah. about like what makes other businesses tick, uh, what makes yeah. people tick. So like, I think that that is, is super cool to you, you get it. I can see that you get energy out of it because you're getting oh, excited yeah. right now, you yeah. know, just talking about and thinking about some of your clients, even though you're like, you're not sharing specific cases. I can see like that you're thinking yeah. about that, that excitement. Yeah. yeah. And it's you know, huge energy source, huge energy source. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and you really are, um, 
helping in so many different ways because like we were talking about earlier you know you're not just helping with business but you're also helping with the personal side because they're happy at work they're going to be happier at home we've all been in those situations where we're stressed out about something going on in one yeah. in one life and we bring that elsewhere right we bring that in back into our personal life or maybe we bring it into the business right yeah um you know uh just thinking of customer service right uh, you right. get the same questions over and over and over and over again and it's not the customer's fault that you're on the line with right now um because right. they're asking the question that somebody else asked it's just um you know overcoming that is is, is so tough well, I, I often will meet with um partners spouses husband and wife teams um i will meet with business partners teams whatever is going on in your world is the business because we're one human having many experiences yeah, again, you're you're again, you're like that Swiss Army knife. You're that utility player, right? I love it that you're willing to meet with everyone under the sun connected to your client. Um, and the, well, the the also it's 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 important for me to say that even though I have all of that openness to whomever's on the table, I insist that part of my role is as a first line of defense. Mm -hmm. I always because I'm very protective of the mental health space, the energy space. Um, I know that the focus in our work is the is the business. And so if we get to a point where if I teach someone or offer someone something, it, it is the, the first line of defense that helps them and things improve, great. And I always am willing to bring in experts in other places because I'm not currently their therapist. I'm not a therapist right now. I am very, very open to say with my clients, this is, this is a need that needs to be addressed by an in-person therapist on a weekly basis. And I would rather you address that first, even than continuing our business coaching, because I'm assessing that that is the primary need right now, mm -hmm. or, you know, this marketing, I can, I can give you like the high level vision of marketing. And if that creates the difference that you need in our work, great. And experts who have tons of training in marketing, um, and that applies to everything, right? So yeah. I will, I'll give you a, a point in the right direction with my Swiss army knife, as you said, I love that. <laughs> um, and I'm always willing to, to throw to say, no, well, this is, this is the boundary of our work and what makes sense. We've seen an, an area that needs attention. And sometimes we need to call in some other crew members. It's so good to hear you say that. Um, and I know that there, there are other coaches that, that practice that mentality too, but, um, I love, especially the part where you said, you know, Hey, you need to take care of this before maybe yeah. we're working together. Yeah. Um, cause like it's, there's, there's so many advantages to doing that. Well, first of all, you're referring people to other people in your network who are going to appreciate the business, yeah. um, you know, or at least telling people, telling people to find somebody that works for them. Um, you're also being truthful to your client because the last thing that you want to do is fail them. Right. And you're not right. going to be able to help them if you know, there's this block in the way. So that's, that's awesome and amazing. And, and then. The other part of it that I think is so important is that, you know, you have limitations and, and too many times in the, in the business world, have we encountered that CEO or somebody that, you know, thinks they can do it all and, and really wants to carry everything on their back. It may have the best intentions in that process, but right. forgetting that, like, maybe they need that other person to kind of help them along the way. And it's so good that you, you bring that to the attention of your clients and that you, mm. you're aware of that. I think that's, that was, that was a hard fought lesson. Uh, you're right. I think that a lot of, cause I'm a trained social worker at heart right. and uh, a lot of social workers will carry this badge of, I need to help everybody. Um, yeah. and I had that badge as well. I thought that I, you know, I was going to change the world and that I was meant to serve as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. And I grieved, I, there was a grieving period when I, because I loved pediatric palliative care, but right. it was, a, it was, it was not my right fit for the rest of my career. And so I grieved that loss of, of thinking I could help everybody yeah. in a big way. That was a, that was it was a painful lesson I had to learn. And I had to learn it again later on when I closed my mental health practice. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not something that, you know, was automatic for me. Uh, and I am very grateful that I have learned that lesson because as you said, there are so many amazing people out there who have these areas of expertise and they can do it better because it's their focus. 
Um, and I don't have to consider myself failing them by referring them on. I'm actually, if I feel like that's the thing that's going to make the biggest difference in this moment, I'm actually serving them. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily always have to be directly from our conversations or our care. I still get credit for helping them get to the right person. And right. that person will help them even better than I could in the moment. And maybe they'll come back to me. Maybe they won't. And that's fine because really we're just um, giving them the value that they need, the support and the care that they need. Whomever gives it to them doesn't really much matter to me. Yeah, that's so great for you for you to say and to hear, um, because you're right. Like, and that's what I was even going to say was that you're you're serving them better by referring them, right. getting them the help that they need. Um, because the other thing that happens a lot, and when you do it all right, um, you know, Jill of all trades, um, you 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 could get yourself into a relationship or a partnership that really threatens the other side, right? Like, you know. So it's important that you do get them the help that they need because you can't be a therapist and, you know, um, a friend and your business coach in, in every situation. There are situations where it may work, you know, but, you know, you hear that old adage, don't uh, go into business with a friend, right? <laughs> and I, I, I'm like, I can do this. What are you talking about? And and I have, <laughs> I have two failed businesses because we tried to work together. And, and unfortunately, one of those failed businesses we have not spoken since. Um, and, you know, and it's not by my choice, but still it, knowing those boundaries and creating those boundaries are very important in any business. And um, like I said, I was very glad to hear you talk about that. You, you know, when you identify something in need, if you don't, can't serve that need, there's someone else better that you'll refer that. And that's something that I think my listeners will, will appreciate and, and, you know, and know coming to you, um, that they're going to get the best amount of care and best service um, they could possibly ask for. I will say, <laughs> <laughs> if I may. Sure. <laughs> yeah, that one of the things I hear a lot, I mean, because I do work with entrepreneurs, um, one of the first things that I noticed you, you were just sharing with me is that you call them failed businesses. Mm -hmm. And I will get a lot of business owners who come to me with a belief system that they failed in the past and, and they carry that failure mentality with them. And they make it a part of their identity, which can become one of the greatest interrupters of whatever business comes next. Next. Mm -hmm. What I really believe about our lives is that everything is happening on purpose, that it is a journey, not a destination, and that even those perceived failures that we have had from the past taught us something and gave us an important lesson that we needed to learn that was critically on purpose to whatever we we're on purpose for. And so just like I was talking about being in pediatric palliative care, I don't see that as a failure by any stretch of the imagination. Mm -hmm. I also don't see it as very different from business coaching, if you can yeah. believe it, because it was a it was such an amazing lesson that carries with me clearly even in this moment today. Right. And it affects the clients that I serve. And so it was exactly what I needed to do on my purpose in service to my mission, even though it looks and seems on the outskirts very differently. It was not a failure at all. And so you probably had that experience too, yeah. where those no, I, businesses had a purpose and they weren't failures, they were lessons. And maybe there's still some learning that needs to come from those, those experiences so that you can stop calling them failures, unless you <laughs> also have the same uh, ability to, to see that it's, it's not a problem that you went through those experiences. No, I definitely learned from those things. And, you know, when yeah. I, when I coach and stuff uh, with hockey, uh, uh, something that I share with the kids is, you know, it's, you know, we're not winning or losing. We're always learning. Right. Uh, right. And if you don't learn something from a win, you're, you're, you're going to end up losing in the end. Right. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> and, and I heard, I heard Steven Tyler from uh, Aerosmith singing in the back of my mind when you said life's a journey, not a destination. <laughs> I, I like, and he probably is not the original quoter of that, of that, but maybe he is, but I'm like, you're absolutely right. And, and I use the word failure and, and there was, there was the business that didn't happen. Um, so, but there were some failures in that and, and, and learning from them is very important as with anything. Um, I think that that's, that's kind of why I sort of gravitate towards working for colleges and working with college students and things like that. Cause I, I want to surround myself with brilliant people, um, that are on the cutting edge of their fields, uh, cause I'm going to learn from that, you know, mm -hmm. I'm always learning. Um, so 
Uh, but yeah, I think you're absolutely right that that I dwell in some of those things, you know. So thank you. Thank you. I feel like I'm an getting, example, I'm, right? I'm getting a <laughs> session right here for free. That's the whole reason I invited you on the podcast. I can't turn it Figure off. Nick out. <laughs> it just it just keeps happening. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, we've talked a lot about a variety of different things. You do so much. I mean, I could talk to you forever, but I do want to kind of uh, focus on anything else that you'd love to to share with you know my audience or the people that are meeting you. Like, wh what are some other things that maybe um, we haven't talked about that you'd like to share? Um, well, we, we've touched on it a bit. I just really always want people to understand no matter if they're, you know, opening a business or they have a career or they're whatever their story is, if they're a parent or, or a teen, or they're stepping into their college experience. One of the primary things that I really want people to understand is that they're already whole. They're already good enough. They're already here, they're already on their journey. They're already on their purpose. And so comparing yourselves to others or putting yourself down or limiting yourself because of something someone else told you is just not necessary that it's all we're, we're all whole. We're all perfect. We're already on our path. And so just enjoy the ride. It's not that serious. And I hope that, you know, that our conversation can help you to understand that a little bit more deeply today, that you don't, you don't have to separate or compartmentalize all these different parts of you or try to hard hide parts of you because you are just a human being and you just, deserve to be heard and seen and valued in whatever it is you're choosing to do. That would be something I'd be proud for, for someone to hear from our messaging today. Wonderful. I can't think of a better way to, to end this conversation other than um, I want my listeners and everyone connected to me to definitely reach out to you and connect. Thanks. We'll put all of your information in the show notes. Um, but I think that it's you provide so many valuable services. You are the Swiss Army knife of 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 um, holistic learning and and coaching, business coaching. I love it. Um, thank you so much for all you do. Thank you so much for having me today. It was a great conversation. I appreciate you too. Thank you for joining us in another episode of That Sounds Terrific. Don't forget to check out the show notes and our website at thatsoundsterrific.com to find the contact information and the best ways to volunteer with the organizations that we feature. If you know someone that is doing terrific things and think they should be featured in a future episode, be sure to email us their name, contact info, and short description of what they're doing at thatsoundsterrific at gmail.com. If you like our show, give us a five-star our rating and give us some social media love by liking our Facebook page that sounds terrific follow us on Twitter at sounds terrific too and Instagram at sounds terrific we love hearing your feedback on how to make our show sound even more terrific till next time